Hey guys, Alexander Williamson here with The Secret History Living Inside Your Aquarium. Today we're going to be talking about rainbow fish, and we're going to be talking about threadfin rainbow fish, and that is the guy with the pink tail who is moving around the left part of your screen. There's a female dead center, and I guarantee you he will be up here to check out the female in just a moment. Um, I apologize for this glare, it's a bow front and there's not really a good way around it other than building a giant curtain or something. Um, so in any case, let's get into these thread fins, let's, let's, let's also zoom in on the male so you can kind of get an idea. So there is the male, that's a perfect shot of the male there. Uh, he has a pink tail and yellow to green fins. And I'll just let you watch his behavior as he harasses the females in the tank. So, um, you can also have a nice look in my living room, like via ghost living room cam. So, sorry about that. Let's get into the fish. I'll just let you watch what they do. So, they're very interactive fish. They move a lot. Uh, they come in a lot of different color variations depending on where they're found and where, uh, where they grew up in that area. So... If it was in the fast-moving water or in slow-moving water, uh, if it had lots of tannins, or if it was stressful with a ton of other fish, or if it had, you know, just a few thousand and it wasn't competitive for food, um, all that changes the way their colors and patterns appear. So you may have probably seen uh, the picture of rainbow fish where they're all flared and um, they almost look like a different fish than when they're not flared. But you might see some flaring right now. Um, he might do it uh, where he raises his top and bottom fins and you'll get to see a whole fan. It looks like a different fish when he does that. Um, but he'll do that to, to spar against other males or to uh, court the females. Um, so their scientific name is Erytherina werneri and they're known as the feather fin or thread fin. Uh, they like about... 73 to 84 degree water with uh, 76 to 78 being ideal and 78 representing their spawning temperature. Now I've had them spawn in this tank. I've had them spawn if we pan down a little bit on this uh, water sprite and also on the Kavamba. The females will lay an egg up to every day and uh, the males will harass them every day. Now I only have one male and three females, so it splits up the harassment a little bit, but I should warn you that it is much better to have a larger group. Um, I had a larger group, some were given away, and some ha have passed away, unfortunately. One has passed away. So, uh, great fish for a, a community tank, even better for a species tank or a tank with other rainbows. This species in, uh, in my tank is the thread fin rainbow but there are many other rainbows and one i would also recommend is the fork tail or the dwarf neon now you just saw a flare from the male so very cool at least you got to see that uh not a prolonged one but they will do that for a long time if there's other males in the area and they'll actually kind of circle like west side story like a, the knife fight or that michael jackson video um oh, which one is it Nah, you guys know what I'm talking about, where they, they're holding arms and they're knife fighting. That one. So, in any case, they're found in Indonesia, they're found in Papua New Guinea, and they're found in Australia. They can travel up to 500 kilometers inland, which I think is pretty cool. Um, they also have um, very different colors in each of those locations. They're about the same size and approximately the same shape in all of those locations. Um... But it just depends. So they're found between the Maroc and Fly River in, Indo or in uh, Papua New Guinea. They're found near Jardin in uh, Australia. And then they're found all over southeastern uh, Indonesia on the islands in fresh, slow-moving water. So um, when they're young, there's kind of a cool thing that goes on. So they usually hang out in marshy swamp areas uh, with clean water. But they hang out in an area where there is a grassy bank or some debris on the bank that they can hide behind. And hundreds to thousands of them, you just saw a fork tail swim by, that's another type of rainbow fish. And here comes the dwarf uh, neon rainbow fish. 
So I've got a little trio of three kinds of rainbow fish in this big tank. So, um, but they'll hang out on the shore and they will school as young or shoal as young fish. And then um, the males and females together, that is. And the males who are adult males like him uh, that have a nice display, which shows that they're healthy and their metabolism's working and they're hot stuff. They're like Fabio on those old romance novels. Uh, essentially, they come, they cruise by, and they can select whichever female of breeding age they like. And then they go do their thing, pair off in the grass, she lays an egg, he fertilizes it, and repeat. So, um, kind of interesting fish in behavior. As you can see, they move around a lot. So I recommend keeping them in like a 40-gallon breeder. 20 long probably would be the minimum for kindness sake, but you can keep them down to 15 in a 15-gallon if you have three of them and not many other fish. But I think that's kind of mean. They can stand being with a lot of other fish. They're pretty peaceful, except for harassing their own kind, which is males harassing females. Uh, so you want to have a ratio of a couple females to a couple males, usually. Um, although if you have, like, 50-50 splits of them, the males will oftentimes... Um, decide who's the alpha and beta by doing those stylized flares and, and uh, twists. So in the wild, they can have a, um, usually they can have a blue sheen or a green sheen on their body, sometimes even a yellow. You can kind of see the bluish green here and uh, to off yellow. And it's a silver body, but they have a reflection and a slime coat that causes it to reflect off in different lights, the top half and their bottom half of their body reflect differently. So, uh, also in nature, they can have red, black, yellow, orange, bright pink, and even blue uh, tails or stripes on their body. So, mine, which has neon pink and yellow or green with some black on his um, fins with a, that blue iridescent glow up top, um, that's just one of many variations. So, you may have seen them pictured otherwise with spots and stripes and things like that too. And that's all just depends on stress level and health level and all that good stuff. So I'm going to say that um, they're a great fish to have. Um, also, according to longtime uh, rainbow fish keepers, uh-oh, you can see my hand, that's unprofessional. Hey guys, uh, they are, they need that 50% water change and they are big fans of plankton and algae, and so putting them by the window to get some natural light, which will cause usually cause an algae bloom in your tank, um, that green water they really like, um, little, little bits of uh, algae and uh, plankton, and they will actually eat algae. I've had them even eat beard algae off of a plant that had some beard algae, so... Uh, that's kind of nice, but when feeding them, you need to be careful because if you notice, uh, they have teeny little mouths, and their mouths, we'll zoom in on one of the calmer females, you can see their eye there, their mouth is even smaller than their eye, so it's like a couple millimeters wide, and they can get things stuck in their throat, so you want to crush their food if you're giving them pellets, or uh, crumble up their flakes, you can give them uh, blood worms, things like that. That should be okay. Micro worms, Daphnia, all that stuff is great. Um, but yeah, so just be aware of that being another difficulty while they're considered not the easiest fish, but with a little bit of effort, anybody can keep these guys. Uh, I feed them two to five times a day. I know that sounds like a lot, five times a day, but um, I just give them little bits, and I, I'll feed the crazy uh, tetras and guppies over in one corner, and these guys know that this corner over here is their corner, and so they'll come over here, and they'll eat slowly with food that sinks that's broken up for them. So um, that's just a tip. One other thing is they are jumpers, so they can jump like, a foot out of the tank, not just like leap over the edge, but they can really fly. They're very quick fish, and they can move from one side of the tank to the other so quick that they hurt themselves on the glass. 
Uh, but usually they're pretty nimble. Um, there you saw another slight flare of the fins. Um, but I would recommend this fish. Uh, they're a really fascinating fish. They've been in the hobby since the 70s. Uh, they were described by Mencken. Um, and then they weren't in the U.S. hobby necessarily uh, continuously. But Gary Lang has done a ton of work getting uh, rainbow fish back into the hobby uh, in the U.S., um, obviously places like Australia, Singapore, Taiwan, Japan, they've been popular because you just go very close by to get them. So, uh, Germany as well, but, um, they are now easy to find, but I would recommend if you guys want to support a fish farmer who is an independent family owned, uh, farm down in Florida, the place where I got these is called Tampa Aquaculture. And they are, the guy who owns the place is a friend of mine now through this channel and just work talking about fish and talking about fish farms. And he raises them and he also sells them direct. So you don't have to go through Seagrest or, or um, any other distributor and then through another markup process. You can buy them basically uh, not quite as low as maybe wholesale would be, but you can buy them near that. Uh, you know, most shops will charge eight to twelve dollars for these guys in the U.S. and um, at a decent size. Sometimes you can find smaller ones for less. Uh, but he charges eight is where he starts, and then you buy like three, and it's like seven, and then you buy, I think, seven of them, and it goes down thirty-five percent. So go to TampaAquaculture.com, check it out. Let him know in the order that you saw it on my channel, and then he'll know that uh, I'm grateful that uh, he sent these fish my way so I could share them with you guys. So um, that's kind of all I've got to say, other than the last little bit is just be careful. Uh, they're omnivores, and they'll forage a little bit. They'll also kind of cluster together and touch each other, so they, they spread disease like bacterial or fungal or worm infections kind of easily. Same as guppies or any fish with nice finnage uh, that is a social fish. And so just be aware of that and um, take care of their health if you notice that they have something going on like that. Uh, ick can be a problem. These guys have gone through a spate of ick um, and done fine. I turned up the heat and also put a little bit of ick X in the water and some garlic and they recovered within a day. So they're a pretty resilient fish. Traveling like through the mail also really stresses them out, so you may not see their color for a week or two, but you will eventually. And I highly recommend these guys. Their, their, uh, their energy and their uh, just their beauty and kind of the surprise of like how you're taking care of them and how their colors will turn out uh, are all part of the fun of this fish. Uh, the females are quite graceful and almost shark-like, even though they're so peaceful. Um, and uh, I think they're just kind of really cool looking. So that's all I've got to tell you about these. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you're taking care of your fish and yourselves. Uh, don't forget to t check out Tampa Aquaculture to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos. And uh, I will talk to you next time, guys. Swim on!